here are some of the secret things that I, because I don't know one or two of you, and I'll just be clear on these, just in case. I don't think you need to hear me say this, but just in case, because they are stepping stones to the heart of darkness. Do not read your horoscope. Mm. Don't show any interest no. in any fortune-telling, horoscopes, tarot, or anything. And if in conversation, if with other people it comes up, declare your non-interest. Mm -hmm. I failed to do it recently, actually, and feel guilty thereof. Do not read novels or books or comics or magazines or stories in ladies' magazines concerning the occult, witchy-type storylines. Just don't go there. What will drag you there will be curiosity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a curiosity is the big thing that can get us with this. Do not be a Freemason. If you are a Freemason, write your resignation the moment you get home tonight. Amen. Do not be a Freemason. Resign. The low degrees don't know what goes on. I probably know more about the work of the higher degrees than an average low degree Mason in the local lodge. It's a stepping stone to the occult, to direct Satanism. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we're not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. <laughs> we're not to be, um, uh, uh, stand away. we have to stand away from it, but we need with people who are involved to be straight and honest with them. Most of the low degrees will be in ignorance of the occult mm -hmm. practice. And I tell you, as you go up the degrees, very quickly it gets so Corinthians. Do not show curiosity into any of the dark arts. Do not be involved in any supernatural activity outside of Jesus Christ. What do I mean? Well, no spiritism, obviously. You don't go to seances. You don't do levitation. But you don't participate in two mystical events and programs that take place in some of the Baptist, Methodist, Anglican churches. The labyrinth. Have you heard of the labyrinth? Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't participate in that. No. And the Enneagram. You don't get involved with that. You don't go through rebirthing. You don't get involved in hypnosis, in faith healing. And that's not prayer for healing of the sick that the Lord Jesus does. But in faith healing... Do not go to meetings and do not participate in the falling over backwards. No. Right. I used to do it. I used to touch people, down they go. Yeah. I repented of that and I will not do it. There is no biblical precedent for it at all. Amen. True. I have been in the sense in the presence of God on a couple of occasions where I've willingly got up out of my seat as did others and lay face down on the floor because mm -hmm. of the holiness of God mm -hmm. in the Amen. room. That Yes, yeah. but all these other psycho-religious psycho activities, flee from it. Yeah. Flee from it. If it's an occasional thing in your own church, it happens, yes. But if it is the pattern of worship, dissociate from it. And let me tell you, mm. do you know my spiritual background, just in case you think I'm some kind of hardcore Calvinist, I'm not, or some kind of hardcore <laughs> cessationist, I'm not. My background is, I was called into ministry and commissioned and laid hands on by Dr. Derek Prince, if you know who he yeah. was, mm. right? Mm. So I'm not anti, but I tell you, I know that the darkness likes to appear as the light. Mm. And if you're going to get alongside people like me and deceive me, then you need to look as a light to the real faith that I have previously experienced. Mm -hmm. There needs to be an element of some kind of supernatural, but it's just slightly out of focus, slightly skewed. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's only slightly skewed to begin with, mm -hmm. because a week later it's a bit more skewed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a month after that it's even more skewed. Mm -hmm. And a, five months after that the pastor has run away with secretary. Do you understand? <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah. It happens, and I'm not talking about anywhere that I know of, other than through the internet. Mm. And, and by conversation with other brethren. The amount of immorality and sexual misbehavior that there has been in the charismatic church is appalling. Yeah. Yeah. The man who oversaw me as I wept to St. Michael of Belfry, the elder that I related to in the kind of pyramidal chain, disappeared one day, as did one of the lady workers, left his wife. Now, that stuff goes on. It's the result. And you know, the warning about apostates is that the lewdness follows. Yes. Yeah. And I tell you, when you get involved with the occultic practices, with a false spirituality, using visualizing techniques, that kind of thing, 
various routines and, and formula and methods to achieve spiritual objectives, you know what happens? <coughs> Sexual immorality follows. Yeah. It's the same as witchcraft. Yeah. It's there in witchcraft. It's there in Satanism. Mm. Jimmy Savile. <laughs> Jimmy Savile, we have two witnesses that Jimmy Savile was not only a pedophile. One witness was a young woman abused. She said, I didn't see his face, but his voice and his hair sticking out from under his satanic hood were obvious. It was a satanic ritual. Mm. The second was a woman of 21. She did see his face mm -hmm. in a satanic ritual and orgy in Chelsea or Pimlico, smart London. Jimmy Savile was actually into Satanism much more prevalent than you think mm -hmm. and you know when they the celebrities the elite the wealthy have gone through all the experiences of life then they come to a point where they have to find a bigger fix and the occult reaches out a helping hand mm -hmm. we need to know these things because we need to know about the darkness mm -hmm. but we need to remind ourselves we are in the light and when darkness wants to associate with us and try to uh, uh, entrap us and try to, to have a way of influencing over us, then it comes along <coughs> in a way that's acceptable to you. Mm. There's another group of brethren who are highly intellectual, very good, wonderful in apologetics. They've made some wonderful contributions. and then they, But they've been seduced by other pseudo-intellectuals coming alongside. And so one of them went to um, an important meeting in the United States of America where he was asked to pray, but not in the name of Jesus. So he agreed. He went and spoke in a Mormon church. He, he curtailed and, and uh, censored his message. He gets seduced. Not, no, he did, they didn't send somebody along to him that was, that was way off beam. But somebody that sounded really good. That's how Satan gets in. That's how some people, even in what we call the disarmament movement, have been seduced. Because there have been areas of life where the enemy, pride or whatever, where the enemy has been able to put a handhold on them. And their discerning has left them. And they've ended up opposing things of God. So globally, darkness on the occult senses, on the move. That would be something that we would say wickedness will increase and we would prove the Lord's coming and soon. I'm just saying accept it. From the United Nations level, the Lucis Trust, formerly the Lucifer Trust, you have heard of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Lucis Trust, mm -hmm. right through to the rise of Wicca, white witch, white witchcraft in this country. Mm -hmm. To Satanism, I've mentioned Savile. He wants these things on his own and in Chelsea it was full of the rich and noble. Right through to yoga in primary schools. Yeah. The darkness is on the rampant uprise. And the satanic content of Eastern religions and Western cults lures in Western people. Yeah. And so it becomes just rippled through our society. Yeah. There, there are many who are full blown. But there are many, many more who are sympathetic based on the liberal doctrine of tolerance. Yeah. Beloved, we cannot tolerate that in the realm of prayer. That's where we stand with this. If you have, you come across your path and God may, subsequent to this, have equipped you to do so, what are you going to do? You're going to pray. You're going to pray. You're going to plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, you will confess that you overcome him by the blood of the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. You will testify that the blood of the Lamb cleanses you and protects you. You will ask other believers to pray with and for you. You will surround yourself with prayer if God calls you into this business. If you have been involved, repent, confess, Renounce. Repent before God. In other words, do you genuinely, are you genuinely sorry that, sorry that you mess with tarot or whatever? Yes. Repent before God. Confess your sin. Renounce it. I will never touch this again. 
you will receive the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus. And you then need to destroy all the paraphernalia and memorabilia that you have. You do not even keep your Freemason's tie or whatever else you have. My friend Barry, who got saved a number of years ago, got saved because his wife first saved, just sensed and knew in her heart, she hadn't had a lot of teaching, that her husband, who was a very active Freemason, should come out of it. And for his wife's sake, he did. And she said, burn everything. But he couldn't bring himself to burn it. Now, they were having a lot of poltergeist disturbances in the house. This is before Barry saved. Yeah. You know, windows flapping open and all sorts of things in the house. And so she said, you've got to get all this stuff burned. So he said he would. And she said, you burned it. He said he did. Husbands do this kind of thing. But he hid it in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> and so the manifestations of an evil spirit continued. Yeah. And she said to him, you haven't burned the stuff. He said, how do you know? And she told him. <laughs> so when he burned the stuff, and he gave his life to Jesus. And that Hallelujah. began the problem. Hallelujah. So you want to get rid of any memorabilia or any occultic stuff. Don't have little Buddhas and that around your house just because somebody <laughs> brought it back. No, your grandson brought it back from his trip around India. Or something. Right? So stay away. It's dark out there. You're not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. That's mm -hmm. why I'm telling you. The occult is on a rampant increase. Yeah. And you will see when you read the scriptures into the book of Revelation that things will get worse. The plan that they are seeking to do is to reinvent or rebirth the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Satan wants his sons. He's got disembodied spirits the world over. Mm -hmm. He wants bodies for them. He will seek all forms to do that. People who think they're going into the tribulation, if you're here, the Lord bless you, you're going to encompass these guys. You're going to encounter these guys because it says, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days before the coming of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. There is no get-out clause that says, as it was in the days of Noah, except there will be no Nephilim, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They are working on, on, on a method of of interfering with the DNA that is already in your body yeah. to change it. That's the plan. Yeah. And so you will get an injection that changes your DNA. All mm. sold to you on the basis of improved health, improved faculties, better sight, so mm. on. But it's much more likely to be a scratch. I had it the other day. Just a sharp scratch there in my arm, right? Can you think of any word in the Bible which is, says it's a scratch? Mm. It's called mark, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Not in normal translations. Mm -hmm. It's the mark of the beast. Yeah. Maybe the mark of the beast is not a chip. Maybe it's not a laser tattoo. tattoo. Maybe it is, but maybe it's not these things. Maybe it's to take an injection. Yes. Just like you take the flu. You must take the flu. I don't take it, but you must take the flu. No, I, don't. I don't take it because the year I took the f injection was the worst flu uh, flesh flu I ever had. So I take some flu. So but but you know, everybody will get used to it. Just a sharp scratch there. Who knows? I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just telling you what the enemy is thinking about and how dark it is. And so stop thinking about darkness and think about greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Because you know Christ's victory. You know he's triumphed over death, don't you? You know that the final enemy is defeated. And you know from reading the book of Revelation that Satan is destined to the lake of fire. Yeah. Prophet and false prophet and antichrist get in there first. Mm -hmm. Summary judgment, no trial, don't go before the great white throne. Lake of fire. And after Satan's use is over to separate the wheat from the chaff, at the end of the millennial kingdom, lake of fire. He's defeated. And as far as you're concerned, don't go where you shouldn't go, and God is with you. Keep in the shadow of his wings, and he's with you. And if the darkness comes up against you, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. It's dark. I'm just going to mention, and there'll be a little more on this tomorrow, it's financially dark out there. I wouldn't have any long-term investment, rather than give all the description. I will tell you three things that I, I think you should do. Be, be prepared in heart to lose money if you've got some savings. I did. It's painful. I did years ago. And I can just tell you it's a painful thing. Be ready about that. 
Secondly, make sure you know that the Lord Jesus is your security. Yeah. And that he never let, I've never seen the children of the righteous begging for bread. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He look after you. Amen. And thirdly, if you are you investing or anything, go low risk. This mm. is the not, not the time for the quick buck. Yeah. This is time if you've got any money, low risk. There's the darkness of human behavior, folks. I'm just going to mention this. We're all in it. Violence, Christmas Eve in Sheffield. I mean, I can't, you know, the, the, the man away to play the organ in the Christmas service, murdered. And so, I mean, it's almost daily, isn't it? There's a woman murdered here, a child murdered there, a boy stabbed there, a gang member shot elsewhere. The violence, the disobedience to parents. I sit and watch it sometimes when Jilly's in the supermarket or so on. The little fits and paddies, you know. <laughs> There's Baby P. Remember Baby P and Baby X, Y and Z? There's that dear little one up at McCunthorpe. We came through McCunthorpe. We couldn't but think of her. There's the crimes against women the world over. There's the world's wars at the moment throughout the world. All I can say, beloved, look up mm. for salvation trust. Yeah. Amen. Don't watch too much news. Mm. There's the darkness of society and in, in politics and commerce and banking in the establishment, in the health service, <coughs> in entertainment. The things that they've kept secret, I mean, that's their darkness. Mm. All They've all got their little secrets. It's the LIBOR rate, now it's the fixing international exchange rates. Yeah. Uh, there's the whole establishment pedophilia, which I attempted to conduct an, oper an operation against as an intelligence officer in Northern Ireland in the mid-70s, and it's still never been properly exposed. No. And men stood in front of a judicial inquiry in Belfast and said that they knew nothing and that no intelligence officer knew anything, which is why they didn't call me. At the end of the day, a television program was made and it made some impact, but nothing happened. The abuse within the Roman Catholic Church under the guise of their secrecy. Mm -hmm. The corrupt BBC. <laughs> darker, darker, darker. I could go on. Jesus is coming. You and I have got to survive it by being the godly people that 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 3 spoke about with Timothy himself. But you have known the scriptures from your childhood. And to some degree or other, that's you. Because every one of us are of a generation that went to school that where the scriptures were open, or where we were sent to Sunday school, or where mum and dad read it at home. We know the scriptures. Do we know them enough? Brian Gamble does not. I don't know the word of God enough. We need to be in there. Now here's the conclusion. It will be a relatively long conclusion. But here's the real darkness that's a danger to us. This is the worst. Religious darkness. Religious darkness. Satan's behind it. Have you ever noticed, if you look at the way extreme religions behave, like Roman Catholicism when it's really got a hold, mm. or Islam when it's got the upper hand and it's got dominance, mm. or within an Orthodox Jewish community, Oof. or if you've been in something like the Exclusive Brethren or some other cultic group, they all operate in the same way. Yeah. Domination, manipulation, Control, control, exploitation. Religion is an abomination. I hate it before God. Amen. Mm. And since the 1950s, there has been a rise of pagan Babylonian religious presence in the West and the so-called Christian world. I agree. And be realistic, it's here to stay. And I know that well-meaning people who don't know their Bibles well enough are telling us there is going to be some great national, pan-European or global revival. They need to read the Bible. I'll just quote one scripture. When the Son of Man comes, will he find the faith on earth? When he's coming? One of the things that has happened in our country is one particular Babylonian and pagan religion, um, which is a plagiarism from... Um, Christianity and from uh, Judaism is Islam. Yeah. And let me make a clear caveat because I don't know where this will go. Let me make a, a, a caption to say I love Muslim people. 
Yeah. I do not wish any ill to yeah. Muslim people, and I wish Muslim people to be freed from the religious bondage mm -hmm. that holds them. And it may well be there's a silver lining to the many mosques that are coming here. At least we can't get into Saudi Arabia to tell them about Jesus, but we can do it here, at least for the time being. Good point. So the Lord has brought them here. Maybe as a judgment on the UK. There is a man in Sheffield who goes out to meet the Muslims because you have Muslim evangelism in the streets of Sheffield on a Saturday. Wow. They have a little stand. It's called The Truth About Islam. And so this uh, acquaintance of mine from a church that I minister in sometime went up and he uh, spoke to the imam and they got on really well. And eventually he said, so when the imam found out who he was, he said, so what would you call me then? So he said, I'll call you an apostate. So they agreed. They were cheerful at this point. He said, uh, so what would you do with apostates if, if Sharia law was being enforced in Yorkshire? And... Uh, Oh, he said, we would treat you the way you're treated, would be treated in the Middle East. Uh -huh. So he said, well, what would that mean? Well, he said, the, the, the way the law is treated in the Middle East. He kind of bounced around <laughs> it. <laughs> and so my friend helped him out. And John said, what you're saying is that I would be executed. No, he said, if it was Sharia law in Sheffield, and I, as an act of apostate, what would your legal system do to me? Well, the imam lost his cool a bit, but at least he had the honesty to say, yes, you would be executed. That's dark. Mm. If, you've, if you've looked at some stuff on the internet, though it's for a brief while, Neville, I think you had it on your blog as well as mine, butchering a Christian to death yeah. by beheading him with a blunt knife. Oh. Mm. That's dark. Mm. Yeah. You're in the light. You're standing strong in the light of Jesus Christ. I don't know if these three men who were executed were born again and baptized and filled with the Spirit of God. I trust they were. I don't know if they were just uh, ethnically, religiously Christian. I trust that they knew the Lord Jesus. Or at least whilst they were being beheaded, they cried on the name of Jesus and were saved. But that is what Islam is at like at its heart. Mm -hmm. That's what it's like at its heart. And the actual visible rise of Islam, you've seen it. You know? I'm not telling you something you've got to look at, you've got to look for. It's visible by minarets and mosques. It's visible by Muslim dress, mm -hmm. by, by beards and all the sorts of other things that goes. And by its high media profile. <laughs> By its high media profile, I know all eyes on Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> that's a biker one. That's a, yeah, right. that's a biker one. You see, the high media profile gets people, it, you change thinking. You want to introduce gay marriage, then talk about it. You want to introduce euthanasia, get it talked about. You want to introduce lowering the age of sexual consent, get it talked about. You want to introduce Islam as part of the fabric of our society, get it talked about. The scripture is very specific that in the last days there will be those following the doctrines of demons. Mm -hmm. And 1 John 2 tells us, 20, 18 to 23, who is he who is antichrist but he who denies the Father and the Son? Mm -hmm. An absolute uh, uh, foundational truth to Islam mm -hmm. that it is impossible for God to have a son. So be kind and loving in your opposition to Islamic expansion. Be kind and loving to individual Islamists and Muslims. But say no to any Christian Muslim ecumenism. Yeah. Mm. If you're in a Methodist or Baptist church, that may face you. Stand mm. against it publicly. Mm. And that is something that would be a reason for leaving. I don't go around telling people to leave the local churches often. <laughs> but if that comes up, you're heading for Chris Lamb and you're Amen. heading for that church yes. to come under the judgment of God. Yeah. Get out. Mm -hmm. There are other sorts of Babylonian religions that have seeped their darkness into the light of the Western Christian world. Hinduism also becoming very evangelistic. We saw Charles and Camilla <laughs> paying their respects this past week, mm. and the Camerons likewise. Mm. And of course, if you were to say at university you were a Hindu, 
Oh, that would be great. If you were to say you were an evangelical Christian, you're a nut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See? Total inconsistency. But the Babylonian religions all have something that appeals. See, one of the appeals of Islam is you can beat your wife, right? Yeah. Okay. There's certain sexual freedoms. Sin isn't a big issue. It isn't now. It will be one day because mm. Allah has no answer for it. That's right. Mm. Likewise, within Hinduism and Buddhism, sin doesn't necessarily feature as a, something that has to be dealt with. They have no savior. They have no way of dealing with it. Buddhism has got, got into our society through the New Age movement. And therefore it's gone into religious thinking. And when it gets into religious thinking and becomes the accepted thought of the academics and the intelligentsia generally, then seeking to be relevant, Christian colleges and seminaries follow the same track. That's right. And it's soaked into them. Mm. Got into the secular world. The Christians all want to be chummy chummy with the secular academic world and thought of highly and accepted. So they change tack. Seeking to be relevant and meaningful in the academic world, scriptures, schools, colleges and seminaries become infected. And they become infected through leadership mm -hmm. because the people at the schools, colleges, and the seminaries become the leaders in the local churches right. and parachurch para -church organizations and in the church establishment. Mm -hmm. And they have got, to some lesser or greater degree, a liberal Buddhist New Age thinking. Yeah. And then when you've when you've got it in the leadership, you can spread the virus of darkness into the church. What we call the emergent church or emerging church, the postmodern church, the false light church, or in one very good uh, set of DVDs, the submerging church. Uh, <laughs> sinking into the darkness. Closest to home. Closest to home. Here's the divine intention. This is what God wants. I'm reading again from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 4. I'll just read it right away because I can't wait. Lack of time. Ephesians 4, 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened. Do you see that it is a process? You're in darkness, you're taken in the light. You stay in darkness, you get darkened. It gets worse. Evil men and imposters get worse and worse. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. That's what God wants. There's not one person in this room that gives God what he wants. By God's grace we're cleansed and forgiven. By God's grace we are being sanctified. But if there's one person in this room that believes they are fully sanctified, please come up here and take over. <laughs> you've got an unsanctified speaker speaking to unsanctified people, but you've got a work in progress Amen. Of sanctification. Yeah, hallelujah. Speaking to the hearers likewise. <laughs> That's be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And similarly, let me just give you one verse from 1 Corinthians 4. It's just lovely how God has it all spread through the word and the truth all fits like a mega multi-dimensional jigsaw. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes who will both both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart, then each man's praise will come from God. You see, the darkness is way, way there on the outside, but it's in their hearts. It's in their hearts. You have the Holy Spirit in your heart, so there's no darkness in your heart. 
You're not dark. Maybe you sleep and get a bit dozy, but you are not of the darkness. Mm -hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5 tells you that. You are not of the darkness. You are of the light. So there are days you're going to sin more than days than other days. You're going to sin every day, but some days will be worse. Mm -hmm. And so Satan will run, come along with his great clouds of deception that say you are condemned and guilty. Mm. And if you believe you can lose your salvation, which is really stupid because the Bible proves you can't, mm. but if you believe that, you'll think that, hey, today I'm not going, I'm going to hell tomorrow. Right? Mm. But the Lord God Almighty has transferred you into the kingdom of light. And nothing will take you from him. Colossians says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness conveyed us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Peter says, but you are a chosen nation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. That's us. That's the divine intention. You are as near to God's intention as any living on planet Earth today. You are as near to God's intention for what he wants in the church. Maybe not all of us, because I know me, but, uh, but no, that's true. We are in the light. But there's an inevitable response in a fallen world. Jude tells us of those who creep in unawares and bring corruption. Yeah. Workers of darkness. And they're not in the cat. They may be in the Catholics, but we used to in the Evangelical Church twenty or so years ago think that all the tears, the feet of the tears, they're all the black arts of of Evangelical or of the Christian Church, or in the Catholics or the High Anglicans or the liberal Methodists or the stuffy old Scottish Presbyterians. Right? No, no. There is darkness everywhere in the church. These are the days of Laodicea. I know you're a Philadelphian Christian, as in Revelation 3, but these are the days when the tenor, the color, the flavor of the whole body of Christ is Laodicean. It's corrupted. Mm -hmm. And the deception comes in the guise of truth. Darkness in the guise of light. Deception runs <laughs> parallel and close to the truth. The best lie is that closest to the truth. Mm. If you want to have a, some form of a seduction, whatever it might be, whether it's mm. to do with a woman or whether it's to do with a business enterprise or whatever it might be, slowly, 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 a little bit, a little bit. And you know, you, you start to diverge. And if you follow a deception, not long, you're way miles away. Mm. Yeah. You know, a railway junction, so one line's going straight, the other just peels off gently. But the longer they keep going, the further it gets from the straight line. And that's how the enemy operates. Mm. It must appear biblical in some way. Mm. They must be able to twist and turn a scripture to give a biblical proof. Mm. That's why in a number of these places where there is great deception in these days, that's why you get a ten minute little ditty, you know, which is two jokes, three quotes from Reader's Digest and a tiny bit of scripture. Huh? Yeah. That's why you get that. Because you can't afford to open the word of God and let the truth free. I think it was Spurgeon who said, someone was saying, we've got to defend the word of God. He said, no, it's like a lion in a cage. You've got to let the word of God out. It will defend itself. You let the lion out of the cage. Is anybody going to try and defend him? He'll defend himself. And so the truth of the word of God. In the church, there is much distorted light these days. We're near the end. And you've got to be very, very discerning. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's other kinds of light. There's infrared. There's ultraviolet, isn't there? In the mm. natural world. Mm. The Bible says that Satan himself can appear as an angel of light. His name Lucifer means light bearer. Light bearer. Therefore it warns that deceiving men and apostates mm. will appear as biblical light. Mm -hmm. It can be all about the death that comes from ritualism. It's creeping back into evangelical circles. Mm. Mysticism, Celtic church, because not 
having a strong, solid foundation on the word and seeking something, the enemy has come along, and particularly younger folk have gone for this new ritualism. And so they sit in rooms, often quite like this actually, and they'll have the lights darkened and there'll be candles everywhere, and they'll ritually, I'm not criticizing this room, it's <laughs> but, um, but do you understand? All seeking something, and they get involved with the spirit of the grey goose and the Celtic this and the Celtic that. Grey goose. Of the grey goose. I, I listen to tape where it's guys shouting and invoking in the spirit of the grey goose. Don't ask me anymore. I, I've forgotten. I laughed out of my head. But the death of ritualism and that comes from ritualism it brings mm -hmm. spiritual death. Mm -hmm. Formal religion brings darkness. You know, you, I'll bet you these valleys are still full of churches with a few handful of people going in there. They've got that musty, horrid smell. Mm. And it's dead. Yeah. There's no spiritual life. Mm. And so people react to that. And they mistake liveliness for life. Mm. They mistake the acts of the flesh for the Spirit of God. Yeah. And they are unable because of a solid boundary that's set by the scriptures and an understanding of the scriptures to discern between a spiritual work that is dark and a spiritual work that is Christ, the Spirit of God. <coughs> and the darkness of formalism and intellectualism in the church destroys the believers, destroys and is uh, uh, active to put to death those as who would teach the word of God. There's the darkness of a false light, full-blown or mixed. Sometimes it's mixed. Often it's mixed. The church are really great people, but then it slips, and it's darkness. And you've got to name it as darkness. Mm. You know how to treat people badly. You have not to be insulting, but you need to discern and then speak out what is happening. For some reason or other, a lot of it comes from the U.S., I'm a guy that's pretty pro-America because I have three daughters all married to Americans and living in America. But a lot of the cultic stuff, whether it be Mormons or, or Christadelphians, JWs and so on, these aberrations, many of them come out of the United States of America. Mm. So be very, very careful of churches with links into the United States. Check them out. And there, I mean, there are some that are just beyond the pale that you'll have picked up on. Tommy Tenney, Todd, uh, Bent Toddley. <laughs> Bent Toddley. <laughs> Tommy Bent. Oh, Benny Bentley. Hind and the like. No. Beloved, just because they appear on Christian television. You know what Derek Prince once said to a group of us that he was training? He said, I think the Antichrist could come out of the charismatic movement. You know how he said that? That would surprise me. Yeah. A, I think he was probably wrong on that, but I know the point he was making. Yeah. He saw those who had a, 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 an unbiblical, unrestrained spirituality. And it brings with it lewdness, lust. And it's not necessarily lust in a section, it's lust for power. Yeah. Lust to be able to do what they like. Lust to be able to accumulate the wealth of the world at other people's expense. Mm. Now is the time for us to stand on these things, to know where we are. The darkness is all around us. I've described all the horrid, nasty darkness of the outside, but it's the stuff that is leaching into mm. yes. the evangelical, Pentecostal, and charismatic Christian community. And we need to be ready to stand, because it's the last days. It's the last thing to be done. So, whether it's from... Cardiff cathedrals or to Cumbran, <coughs> what are we to do? What are we to do? <coughs> if my flesh was allowed to do, I would go out and torch a lot of them, but that's not what Jesus would do. <laughs> oh, no. Not what Jesus would do. <laughs> so we need first and foremost to keep our own flesh under control. Yeah. Because when you see these things happen and you love the Lord, you know what happens? Your emotions get going. Right, mm -hmm. And so we need to walk with and seek the Lord. I know that sounds just like trite, but can I ask you about your prayer life and, and how good it is? Well, no, I won't. I'll tell you about mine. No? <laughs> I'm doing a great prayer life and then suddenly other activities and preparation comes along and then somebody visits and then I have to do my emails 
And then I'm so jolly zonked, I can't even eat my tea. Well, I can't, but... I <laughs> <laughs> just can't. Uh, uh, prayer life has to be guarded, it's precious. Prayer life has to be guarded. The other night we were all very tired, and I said, I just can't, we were doing Bible, I said, I just, I'm so weary, I can't do Bible, but we prayed. So we need, the first thing, we're going to stand against the darkness that is up, approaching and is seeking to invade the church. We need to be in the light, close to him. And opposing the darkness is not to be our priority. Adoring, worshipping the Lord Jesus is our priority. Anything else is peripheral. But we need to proclaim the truth, as I have done, and I hope with good manners this evening. Proclaim the truth. The scripture says, speaking the truth in love. Yeah. You've got to be transparent. You've got to tell it like it is. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, you sometimes have to name names. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. But it's speaking the truth in love. Mm -hmm. It's love. Nancy showed us an amazing uh, thing on astronomy and the stars. And the man, I can't remember his name. Louis Giglio. And how glorious it all was. But the thing that thrilled me most about it is how he turned the spotlight of focus on the worship and adoration yeah. and, and, and uh, just glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ in doxology. Yeah. And that needs to be our number one. Yeah. Yeah. And he kept emphasizing how great the yes. love of God is. Yes. I recently have some brothers who made my, myself, made me their enemy. And I had, with the help of other brethren and my dear wife, I had to be in a place where I loved them, prayed mm. for their blessing. Mm. And do you know the thing that helped me so much? These guys were being bad. I thought, hey, imagine it was me that was being bad. What would I want? I'd want mercy. Yeah. So I prayed for God's mercy. Now there are some people in the body of Christ who are being very naughty. Mm. And they've opened the doors to all sorts of things. Some of them are deceivers. Some of them are tears. They are not born again. One of the problems of the charismatic movement was the wishy-washy gospel yeah. that latterly was its its forte. See, you know, Jesus will bless you. Come to Jesus. I'll pray this wee prayer. Yeah. And now some of the people who came in that route are, are leaders. Mm -hmm. But many who are truly saved are not the apostates. They have been apostatized. They have come under the influence. They have been deceived. Mm -hmm. And we need to be greatly merciful and loving towards them. But speak the truth. Mm -hmm. You need to, in various areas of life, be separate. We need, I'm not one of these guys, you know, that, that is some kind of stuffy evangelical Christian in a sleeveless, fair aisle knitted sweater. Do you understand? <laughs> you know, it, it's awfully pious. <laughs> and, and has a whole lot of little legalistic rules, like he doesn't buy cake away food on a Sunday or whatever. <laughs> um, I'm not one of those but I do believe we need to be separate in behavior and practice and sometimes in position from the world Yes. sometimes there are places we just don't go legitimate places where we know darkness is there there are churches that I would not visit there are things that I would not do I would not participate for instance and I would politely decline from participating in a Roman Catholic funeral, something like that. Yeah. We need to be separate. And the Lord will show you how that applies to your life. It's yeah. not my job to bring you under any condemnation, far from it. But I need to say to you, there are things that have to be cut off. We need to learn the current and the recent lessons from things that have gone on in the 70s, 80s, well, more in the 80s, 90s, and early this century, in various places around the world where great movements have been promised. And then when you actually investigate, did Christ... Yeah. Don't be horrid about others, but just leave them alone on the other side of the road. Mm. Let them walk on. Let the dead bury the dead. Mm. Mm. Revelation concludes that he who is righteous be righteous still, that he who is evil be evil still. Yes. Sound, the light, sound the alarm, shine the light in your life and in your words but don't start to get involved mm. 
unless you have a very direct and confirmed clear word from God. <coughs> this darkness, this doctrine of demons that's come into Western Christianity, it yeah. will emulate, it will copy, it will fake pseudo-biblical teaching and truth. It will copy biblical practice and behavior, but not by the power of the Spirit. It looks like biblical Christianity. It can fake the gifts. You can fake the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. You cannot fake the fruit. No. The flesh can't no. fake the fruit of the Spirit of God. And that's what you watch for. Mm. So be careful. These things have always got a large element of sight. People have seen <coughs> things and so on. Sure. But I can tell you that you can... People can be easily deceived. Mm. Yeah. There's, uh, I don't know, half a dozen entertainers are amazingly <laughs> clever at deceiving people into thinking they've seen something that they haven't. Darren Brown and the yeah. like. And there's one consistent holy behavior. Holiness. Holiness. Separated to God. It's not some kind of marvelous piety that's beyond other people. Mm. It's just being separated to God. It's one thing to be separated from the world. To be separated to Him. Mm. Now I know many of you have busy lives, you'll have jobs, you'll have all sorts of family responsibilities. But make sure He has the first portion. Like on the first of first fruits. It was got you Jesus you know, the the, the you couldn't eat grain in Israel on the first day of first fruits, the first of the harvest, until the wave offering, the first of the harvest, had been given to God. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my Father. Later that day, when he's been to the Father's presence, later that day, he says, handle me and see it's I myself. You can have the bread of life now. The Father has had his portion. You be like that. Let me summarize it and come to a close. There are all kinds of darkness surrounding us, but it's short term. We're going home. Yeah. Don't be despondent. You have hope. You are the light. The Spirit of God in you, that's the light. It's short term. We're going home, but we do need to survive fit and active. Don't, be, don't let the darkness shut you up through fear. Don't let any of these things that I have said cause you to fear. I was with Nancy at Nancy's farm for lunch today. She's had a very, very hard blow yeah. with the death of her son. But you know, she was saying, I believe the Lord's changing my ministry. I, I, I've got more to do. Wow. Mm -hmm. Praise wonderful. God. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Hallelujah. And we, we have Jesus' ultimate triumph and victory proven to us in the Scriptures. Believe it. Greater is he who is in you, the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that's the result of Calvary, than he who is in the world. Yeah. More, now, more than ever, a healthy, vibrant walk with Jesus. Private, personal life with Jesus. Prayer and the Word. That's so important. And such practical preparations mm -hmm. as avoidance, <coughs> switch off, do not listen, come out of her, my people. Do not neglect to gather together. Set your mind on the things that are above where Christ is seated with God. Look up. Your redemption draws near. Or be like the Earl of Shaftesbury who said in the, in the 19th century, I do not believe that there is one waking hour when I do not consider the return of Christ. Keep occupied for him. You are the sons of light, the sons of day, that sons is genderless in the Bible. That's men and women. Mm. You're not of the night. You're not of the darkness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us not sleep, but let us watch and be sober. 1 John 2, the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. The night is almost over, and the day, the day comes next. And it won't be long. Be patient, for the Lord is at hand. Amen. 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 Amen.